G'day. David here from Smart Soil Media reporting. Um, we had our uh, mother's 60th last night, so I'm a bit, bit rusty today. But we are headed up to Molleran. Um, and I can't bloody wait. It's going to be a bloody cracker of a day tomorrow. We've got Jane Slattery, of course, Ian and Di Haggerty, Anthony James. We've got people from all over the state coming along to see what is happening out in Ian and Di's place. So um, Smart Soil will be heading out there to report and get some on the ground coverage of, of the uh, day's flow and try and pick the brains of those legends that will be out there. And I'm really looking forward to bringing you some gold nuggets or some soil nuggets. <laughs>
sheep eating it? Oh, they've only just come in here. This is the first time it's been green that I've noticed. Okay. Um, yeah, so we haven't actually seen they've only been in here a few days as well. So there's plenty of other stuff at the minute. So I've actually been watering them off this hill down the bottom because yeah. I've, you know, given the hills are a bit vulnerable, I've put a truck down the other end to encourage them to decide that's a better place to be at the minute. <laughs> I'd like to take this plant as well just to show people because it is similar to one over there but it's not the same but it still looks by the seed be a, a bandicoot grass as well but it's just so yeah at a really different growth stage to what we're going to have a look at on the other side of the property and that's been the beauty of this place because that side and this side is really different yeah, yeah. Now this is another little one. This is um, a red, we call it red paspalidium. This one actually might be. He's, he's very early, he's only just getting his shoots out now because he's a summer it's active. Yeah, yeah, yep. So I might take that little one too. Thank you. But yeah, no, that's amazing, isn't it? It's quite a, quite a bit there. And so these ones, but it's interesting too, because they described it as um, summer active, but that's, it's just kept going all year. And I guess probably we've had good summer rain and it got it active and then it's, it hasn't, it went quieter during the winter period, but it's got going really early because to have gone to seed so quickly, must be a pretty amazing plant because I've seen it in seed twice since the beginning of the year now. Yeah. They probably just haven't been able to observe it under these conditions to know where it really how. Well that's what, we had the, the scientist come out from deep here because he's been pretty keen on, he loves the past, you know, and pastoral plants in particular. And he said they would just want to come out and learn and just see yeah. Yeah. what it actually does do. Absolutely. But you know, if um, you take that one home, it'd be lovely, maybe. <laughs> See what your dad reckons. All right, welcome back. We are up at the shearing shed. People are starting to arrive. Got all the toys in the background over there. Um, and already we are being tested to get into heart, get out ahead um, with some incredible stuff that we are finding out this morning. There's already some magic happening, so um, I'll elaborate on that further uh, throughout the day and we will have a chat to our wonderful new friend Heidi. Um, but for now, let's go into the shearing shed and have a look and um, get cracking. Kaya, Nuna Kort, Wanju Wanju, Nija, Balarong, Nunga Buja. Nyun, Jurpan, Wangi, Nuna Kort, Buja. Nuna Kort, Kadijan Wangkin, Daman, Mam, Nank, Wur, Bodia, Kura Kura. Yanka, Wanju Wanju. Hello everyone, welcome to Balarong Nunga Country. I'm happy to be speaking with you all today on country. We Noongar people were given our knowledge through the oral tradition from our grandfathers, grandmothers, fathers, mothers and Noongar bosses long, long ago. Thank you and welcome and hope you enjoy today. Today has actually been years in the making. And at the same time, not a moment too soon, as systemic breakdowns across the board further progress and become more apparent. So whether we're talking supply chain disruptions, inflation, of course, drought, floods and fires, all heightening interrelated symptoms that many of you know too well. But there is another trajectory at play that addresses those collective symptoms, and this place is a standout example. 
Indeed, Charles Massey calls it a world breakthrough, no less. And key to it is what Diane Ian Haggerty think of as natural intelligence farming. What we're going to explore in depth today, and in a way that's actually never been done before. This is quite a special day, and quite special to have such a diverse group here with us. The focus here to date, over the 25 years or so, has been on humbly just going about the work. And I say humbly, as they're constantly saying, we're no better farmers than anyone else. So in the spirit of that generosity, let's explore what natural intelligence means, how it works, how we tap into it, and the broader story of how it's come about and resulted in what we're all sitting amongst today. Paul Hawken, some of you might know of, the best-selling author of Drawdown and more recently Regeneration, said to me once, there's no machine or artificial intelligence that'll get us a hall pass to the 22nd century. It's through natural intelligence that we might find our way. And if or when you don't find that easy, it might be worth remembering that so much of the good stuff here and amongst you guys, I'm sure, has come out of trying circumstances and personal transformation. I think of Diane Ian, at one point so unlikely to end up here. As a woman, Di wasn't even considered for farming. Became an OT, but that became pivotal to the journey. As a trucker and running a servo in Derby, Ian was literally miles off being here. And ever since, how many times have they been told it won't work? But here we are. So we've got plenty to celebrate today and so much more to learn in the face of these growing challenges, but with the lure of enormous opportunity. So what if we embrace a bit of all this today? Challenge ourselves a bit here, open our minds a bit, and see what opportunities might be worth having a crack at. The work is starting with the caretaker of the property, or the caretakers, and it, there's a transition, like where there is work to do in the environment but mostly it's a reflection of where the person is at so if I guess if somebody has a negative outlook they're going to probably look for problems and that's what really is created in the environment yeah. um, with someone that maybe has a more positive outlook this is just called keeping it quite simple um, then they'll be looking for solutions and be open to a little bit more as yeah. to what the country is trying to yeah. tell them I think people know they know that there's something, they know that it's something within them that they're looking for and then they just, when they, yeah, they just feel a connection to it. When they hear about it, it's like there's something in there and then they, yeah, so they're opening up and they're actually just accepting that it's okay to be vulnerable yeah. and just be, yeah, open to finding out at least. Yeah. And also I, I, do, I do wonder, maybe people haven't known that they have a choice and if I was to say anything, that yeah, we all have a choice. So we can continue to go down the path that we're going. If you know, if somebody's not happy or whatever, continue to do that. But you can also change that. And that's really just a switch. Rather than having somebody saying, this is what you need to do, and you go, oh, it doesn't feel right to me. It's like, okay, what feels right? Let's go, let's do it. Diane and um, use Nutrisol and have for many years, so um, I've had a, a long connection with them. I've been over here to their farm a couple of times and they've been over to the worm farm a number of times, so I've definitely learnt a lot from them and I think them using uh, a worm liquid in their broadacre property certainly is important um, in the industry for people to see the success that they have with using something as natural as a worm liquid. I think in the industry at the moment it's time to um, just open ourselves up a little bit more. Um, we have a number of events and we, we talk about the systems and the things that we do, but at the moment I think we're really realising the importance of people and um, with this event tapping into natural intelligence farming is really starting with the people.
because this was in native grasses. When we're finding where you've got native grasses, we're actually not getting those traditional winter weeds. Mm. Where you've got bare country, you'll get ryegrass and radish and all the stuff, but where the native grasses are, which we're finding we're not getting those weeds. The brew was um, compost extract, which is our, our compost extract. We use a couple of diverse forms of compost. Um, in the future, we'll probably end up putting a little bit of worm castings in with it, but basically Johnson's and yeah, soil. Nutrisoil. <laughs> and Nutrisoil. And yeah, so just, just to activate that compost, you know, so Nutrisoil does a really good job of activating it, but if we can cheaply just add a bit of fish or seaweed or a combination of both. Um, this year we chucked a little bit of an amino acid product in just because we thought we might like to have a go, um, but all, all very cheap. But I think that whole brew, on average, um, where we've done, if I took my whole brew across the whole 10,000 hectares of cash crop, divided it back, there's a couple of paddocks I gave two foliars, a lot most of them just had one. I think we're looking, if I added every bit down into the labour involved in composting and all of that thing, it's probably cost us 25 to 30 bucks a hectare. So we're, we're turning like 20,000 litres of total product, we'll put it out at 50 to 70 litres, probably on average of 50 litres to the hectare. So basically that's got 800 kilos of compost. So I think I did the figures a while ago and took back what your water cost was, labour cost, everything, and you know, you might be looking at um, three or five cents a litre, something like that. Huh. Yeah, bugger all. This Salt Lake system here that we were able to see, the when the water seeps in over the summertime, the sheep actually drinking the fresh water on top, so it's a really saline area. Um, so that's what raised our awareness in the first instance, and yeah, it does seep it across the landscape into that lake, even during the, the peak of summer. Um, yeah, and they, they just weren't going to the trough, and I was thinking, you know, what's going on? And that's what was happening, they were drinking up there on top. Um, and as I said before, that's where it's all coming from, that paddock just up that we came through with all the, keeping that perenniality in there to make sure that it comes down here fresh. So what, so what you do, you'd see them, um, they'd be digging a little hole on the side of, on the side of the bank of a lake. They'd dig a little hole and catch about half a litre or a litre of water and drink, actually drink that water. And um, that's what we just serve it as fresh water, so we haven't followed it up. Right. AJ says it's time to go, so we better get moving. <laughs> Today is actually uh, quite serendipitous for a number of reasons. One, the season that we're having. Um, normally we'd be flat out harvesting, or Diane would be flat out harvesting uh, this time of year. And uh, we've had an incredibly mild season and a late season, and it was just a very spontaneous, after the RCS conference, um, decision to have a, a field day here uh, with the Nutrisoils wanted to do. And it just worked. Um, and But it worked for a lot of people coming from interstate, uh, coming from all around, WA um, and uh, but the main thing was is that um, you know Diane Ian have really found that the story needs to be shared um, and by really sharing the story and, and opening up more it also enables others to share theirs and so they've been the recipient of, of people sharing um, and people stepping up uh, and realize that you know we've all got to do it we've all got to play a part in that and if you've got something to share then um, yeah, and there's people willing to uh, and interested in, all, in to know about that, then providing the opportunity is the least we can do. Um, thank you everyone for coming along today. It's just amazing turnout and particularly to a lot of the people that have travelled from the other side of the country. I'm just absolutely in awe of that um, commitment. Fairly small and humble beginnings, but a um, fair bit of passion and burn to make it work. Um, Ian and I went to the farm in 1994. We had the business in the Kimberley, um, sold our share out of that and purchased a small bit of land next to my parents. Um, we had $100,000 at the time at, with the down payment on the land. Um, and we got a few, about 300 Merino ewes and worked alongside Dad to get um, use of his machinery to farm the farm to start with. 
had a farm consultant tell us in the beginning, um, probably in the first five years, that you're better off selling out rather than continuing because there's no way in the current farming system you could make it go from a 1,600 acre starting point. And you know, I are fairly dogged and yeah, we don't take um, no for an answer. And we just set about trying to prove them wrong. Talked a little bit about what natural intelligence is, is but to us a lot of it is not being the dictator ourselves. We're not trying to direct a natural system. Um, we're just participants of it um, and very grateful for that. And that's, I guess, the story of our whole farming system now is a love and respect and gratitude for all those things that are going on around us. And I guess a bit of awe as well that it is um, so beautifully put together. And at the end of the day, it takes a lot of stress off because a lot of those things are occurring. And as long as you can, um, I guess, facilitate that, because we are in a food production system, we're needing to produce food off this landscape and a diverse range of foods and fibre or whatever it might be. But a lot of that stuff can occur without us having to have too much um, impact. We had a wonderful day on farm yesterday with a field day that had people come from all over the country. So we were just blown away with people attending from every state of Australia uh, other than the Northern Territory and it was a fabulous gathering of people. And it was basically really um, telling story, telling the story of natural intelligence farming, I guess, um, so that people could really delve into that um, at a deeper level than we've been able to um, offer previously. So we had the whole day dedicated to that and um, had Jane Slattery available to, as well, uh, participating to share her wisdom um, and beautifully facilitated by Anthony James from the Regeneration podcast and he was his usual master at bringing together people, bringing together the whole stories from everywhere. And, and thankfully for you guys, um, as the media representatives, to be able to capture those really beautiful moments as well. So thank you so much. It was really, really quite incredible to, um, I think when the Carla first broached it to us um, back in August and said, you know, mate, what so we have, you know, 20 to 40 people come around and we'll have a bit of a talk and and it just, just took off from there and you know, 170 people turned up yesterday and um, to have that amount of people, you know, this is an isolated property, put that commitment in to come um, mm -hmm. was just a really good testament to you know, what people are wanting to come and learn and um, it was just amazing. I think what's been building is just that support network that people are there and got you back now, even if, if you're prepared to go out on a limb and say stuff openly that others, you know, probably would shy away from at times and, you know, has, has been an interesting one to bring forth. But there's so many people now that got you back and even um, with the RCS conference in July, that convergence one, it really was about, okay, this is where things have come. The future is going forward, opening up everyone opening up but really getting off your backside, contributing, doing your bit because we can't afford to wait anymore. We can't, we can't afford to have self-doubt and fear holding us back. It's got to be getting out there, being brave, having the courage and just getting the job done because um, there's not, not going to be anyone else to say, oh, well, you know, I'll pick up the slack. We've all got to put, put our shoulder to the wheel and, and contribute as best we can. Definitely all got to do our bit. Yeah. You know, when you see the younger generations coming along and the young people coming along, they're actually asking for this. They're looking at this. They, they don't want to go back to status, status quo. So mm -hmm. it's up to us in, in our stage of our, our lives to actually lead with that example and, you know, and... Um, we, we can make a difference and, and if everyone gets out and, and does their bit, it will make a difference. You know, we've, we've had people for a long time been looking into what we do and we've had that question come to us a lot. There's something they're not telling us. That's what everyone says, you know, they, they, they read into it. There's something they're not telling us and, and what we're not telling us is the true meaning behind natural intelligence and that's what we said, right, now's the time, you know, we, do, we don't care, it's actually got to go out there. That's what yesterday was so all crucial. about. Yeah. I think what was really exciting, AJ did a bit of a, um, I guess, crowd census in the beginning of the setup, and it looked like there was about 60% farmers and 40% members from other parts of the community, which is just fantastic if we can starting to see people from all walks of life in the community 
this sort of stuff resonating with them, wanting to make change from whatever um, perspective they're coming from. And that was, and at the end of the day, we finished off with just a, a group of people who wanted to stay around a little bit longer and, and talk personally. And there was, say, 40 people still remaining, um, you know, people that didn't have to perhaps travel as far home and so forth. But yeah, just um, the sharing was just phenomenal. So I think people are really ready to join together and work together, uh, uh, you know, along these kind of lines of how can we look after our planet? How can we look after, you know, this health of humanity and so forth? And um, they're right in there to put their, you know, shoulder to the wheel, which is just fantastic. But yeah, in a really supportive, encouraging, and as the guys have been saying, there's just an excitement amongst the people. Um, a couple, few fellas from Queensland here this morning, and they, as they describe themselves as old grey-haired fellas, but you know, really would have been at the end of their career, but now they're, they're so excited and got a curiosity and just really getting out of bed with purpose every morning and just something to do and something that's really positive that they can contribute. So that's just fantastic. I think there's a, um, uh, there's been a quantum change really. There's been a big, big change over as of lately and, uh, and a lot of this is global as well, mm -hmm. you know, and um, people are really linking in and, and looking to actually go that extra mile, you know, see what they can do, you know, change their, their mindset of what they're thinking and just looking into like natural intelligence, all these kind of ways and where a while ago it would probably be held though, a bit more reserved but now I think with what's been happening around the globe and the necessity to actually get change and not only just change in our land and environment, it's in the health of our people as well and the mindset of our people, you know, people are having um, trouble coping on some in some fronts, you know, about what's been thrown at them and things like that. And I think there's a, a big need to actually, what people are looking at is actually look at everything as a whole. Yeah. It's interesting, um, something that popped into mind as a result of, you know, all these kind of conversations. It's gone beyond natural intelligence farming now and it really should be perhaps naturally intelligent living. That's a wrap. Field day's finished. We've had a lovely morning today out on country, finding bush foods and identifying some really interesting sites. Um, and it just sort of capped up the capped off the uh, the mind expanding, heart opening experience that it was tapping into natural intelligence. Um, flies have come out after the rain, as you can tell, and a few for breakfast. Um, but I mean, I just feel so grateful to be able to tell these stories and um, and to be so welcomed and, and received so openly by every, all these farmers and wonderful people that have travelled from all over the country to come find out more about this operation and feel what is happening on the ground here because it is something that almost has to be felt to be believed and um, sometimes science doesn't do a good job of of translating these things and um, sometimes our mind just gets in the way so to get here and have heartfelt conversations have good yarns feel the feel the landscape and um, yeah just a just a magical couple of days so really looking forward to seeing how all the footage comes out um, all the presentations and everything from yesterday because it's always hard to digest that in the moment so off we go Thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Smart Soil or see more content like you've seen just then, um, be sure to sign up below and also check out our online course with Colin Sice.